my god. Onion is white diamond. <laughs> Dude, it's the twist that we've all been waiting for. It's all those theories that we've ever read all rolled into one. <laughs> They're all true. <laughs> They're all true. Every every last one of them. It was pretty pretty daring to do this. I know, yeah. Really putting Steven Universe in a bold new direction, if yeah, you ask me. Yeah. I'm really... Uh, like, this show was good before, but now it's on the map, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really made its mark now. <laughs> it's really... Right. So, you may remember, last time there were only two episodes of Steven Universe. We tacked it on to our Adventure Time podcast, because we were afraid we wouldn't have enough to talk about. Ah, yes. Uh, our loyal, delica- dedicated fans will remember this. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a problem this time. No, yeah, I think we're <laughs> going to have quite enough uh, meat for a full episode yeah, here. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Truly. Truly, there's enough meat here, yeah. Yes. So, let's jump right into it. Yeah, let's jump right into it. We'll, we'll get to the real reveal a little of later. Of course, yeah. But first, we have to talk about Can't Go Back. Can't Go Back. Quick synopsis. Steven... Wakes up to Ronaldo slamming on his door, being Ronaldo. Yeah. This was the first time Ronaldo has been funny in a while. Yeah, I liked it? I liked him in this episode. Yeah, Ronaldo's pretty cool in this episode. Yeah, yeah. He, it's it's the important part is that he's in there in small doses. Yeah, I we, think. Need, we need he, small he doesn't need a, doses of he doesn't need a full episode. Don't give him a full episode. He just gets <laughs> annoying after a while. Like the the with, with Ronaldo, the joke is funny. It just wears thin, I think. Yeah. And that if if you just give him like. The very like first like one minute of an episode, then he's fine. I liked Rising Tides and Crashing Skies though. I thought that was a good full Ronaldo episode, but most of them were kind of boring. But anyway, moving on. Ronaldo, thanks to Ronald, thanks to Ronaldo, actually does something in like that in- yeah. involves the plot. He actually does something, <laughs> as opposed to just calling some bloodstone for a whole episode. <laughs> yeah. um, d- re- finds Lapis on the moon. Finds so, Lapis. obviously, Stephen goes to investigate, yeah. finds the barn, Lapis isn't there, goes back to the moon base, and there she is, spying, spying on them, <laughs> spying on them from using above. her, using uh, the spy holodeck to, yes. uh, you know, keep an eye on everybody, yeah, and, yeah. and basically LARP like she's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, she's like, man, I could be friends with these guys. Even though she could just go down there and do it for real. Yeah, but she doesn't. But she doesn't. And the, and she has a song about that. And, oh, yeah, and she's got to sing about it, of <laughs> and course. I really like that song. Yeah? It's a Lapis song. The first Lapis song. The first, well, I mean, uh, what about... Uh, Water Witch? Yeah, Water Witch. <laughs> I forgot what it was going I don't think that counts. She was trapped in a mirror yeah, and it couldn't be clear. clear. <laughs> I mean, technically not a Lapis song. <laughs> well, technically. Yeah, anyway. I don't remember Lapis ever singing that one, unfortunately. But yeah. Even though she said. Well, let's go into the song review portion of the show. What did you oh. think of the song? I think it's called uh, On That Distant yeah, Shore. Yeah, On That Distant Shore. Um, so, the first time I heard this song... Uh, I didn't like it, because I thought it was really uh, kind of like clunky, and I thought the lyrics were just really like, you know, wah wah sad, <laughs> like uh, l- l- I, like I got a few of them written down here. Like, it's like a I wrote down a motivational poster. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I'm I'm feeling all these funny feelings that I've never felt before, <laughs> and like oh I really need to learn to smile like oh my god so many colors <laughs> so many colors so bright yeah so many colors uh, that's which is uh, very funny and uh, <laughs> hilarious but that that is the first half of the song which gave me a bad impression I like the second half of the song a lot better uh, I'd say it's pretty good. I still, I, yeah, keep going. Yeah, I really like this song, <laughs> yeah. uh, especially after re-listening to it. Like, I don't know. I have a tier list of Steven Universe songs. Yeah, obviously. Like, you got your S tier songs, which are songs like I go out and down download a rip of immediately. <laughs> like you're stronger than you. Yeah. Or here comes a thought. Or. Oh, yeah. uh, it's over, isn't it? Oh, those yeah, are my S tier songs. I went nice. out when the moment I heard those. Okay, I need to be able to listen to this all the time. <laughs> 
Then they got your A tier songs, which are songs like I know all the words to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I know all the words to these songs, but I don't actually like them that much. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I've got to memorize. I just don't listen to them quite as often. And I, so for this song, I'd say I found my. I don't know all the words, <laughs> but I found found myself humming it to myself from time to time. Yeah, I found myself humming. So it. it's a low A to a high B tier song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In my very strict yeah. song tiering system. Very strict. <laughs> uh, uh, you can look forward to seeing a uh, song tier list released in the. Uh, in the 2019. Yeah, 2019. <laughs> but yeah, but. Even even better than like just the song itself was like the sort of I think like the themes of the song go really well with the rest of the episode, and so I guess we'll get into the rest of the episode yeah, soon. Yeah. And also the like the presentation and like the video the I guess the music video for lack of a better word during the song was really good. Yeah, the visuals I, were pretty good. Those I really like the visuals. I have written down a uh, trap shooting. I don't know what that means. You know what trap shooting is? No, I don't. Trap shooting is when you launch a clay bird in the air and then shoot it. Why? Does that have to do with anything? Because that's what they were doing in the and that's what they were doing in the oh, thing. Oh yeah, they were they were trap things. shooting. Okay. Oh, they were having bird. I launched some traps. I was in very the air. lost for a second there. Jeez, what a uncultured swine. Sorry. And then, like, uh, the best part of that was when, like, Paradise gets mad at him. Like, she's like, I'm just trying to move stuff around with my mind, and you keep, like, breaking them. I don't know. I think she was just like, it wasn't good enough or something. Oh. Yeah, I like to imagine. <laughs> I like to imagine she's like, I'm trying to practice my metal powers here. You guys keep blowing them out of the air. Yeah, that's, I, like, I, like, that's, that's I, I like that reading better. That's yeah. hilarious. I mean, theoretically, it could be the other one. It probably is, but you know what? What am I gonna? What am I gonna like? Bow to authorial intent now? Come on! I've never bowed to anything in my whole life. You think I'm gonna start now? <laughs> okay, okay. So after moving this, on to Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah, back to Steven Universe. This Lapis has her song, um, and then they're both sort of chilling out in that room, and that is like one of the most gorgeous shots. Yeah, oh in yeah. All, the entire cool. show. I love mm -hmm. I love them just sort of sitting in like the sunset room. Yeah. I thought that was really neat. Finally Steven Universe can do what it's always wanted and have the entire scene be a background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the whole reason for inventing this holodeck. Yeah, yeah. The, and that looked really good and I really liked that. I mean it looked good, so you know what you gotta do. Yeah. And then Steven has a dream. And in the dream is another one of my favorite scenes in all of Steven Universe. Well, of course, you have the diamonds talking to yeah. Pink Diamond. They say some really interesting stuff that we're going to go into. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get into that. But, like, the scene I'm talking about, the, the moment that's like, oh, is yeah. when you Boop. see and when you see Pearl, like, walk out slowly from behind. Yeah. Like, it's like, that is a really cool moment. It's like, yeah. the, it's real like, the music and the visuals are so good. It's really good it's really <laughs> it's really effective it really uh especially the first time i watched this episode when i didn't like it very much <laughs> uh this was what like really got me to think like mm, maybe i should rewatch this yeah like just presentation wise I, this is if like if all the episodes of steven universe could be like this episode <laughs> yeah then you, you, you guys can take as long as you want in between episodes because <laughs> exactly. this was so good i really <laughs> liked it yeah I yeah. uh, pretty much agreed with you on that one. Yeah, but Steven has a nightmare that sort of reveals the true murderer of Pink Diamond. Oh my. Oh my god. And it was Pearl the whole time. Yes. And it scares Steven, and that scares Lapis. Yeah, oh my god. We're going to go into that and too. And then Lapis... Flies right, away. What, what now, do, I think... What do you want to go into? The Lapis thing first, or, like, what the diamonds said first? Um, well, we'll get into more of the diamonds in okay. the next episode. That's a good point. So let's, let's clear up the Lapis thing, because after watching it a few times, like, the first time I watched it, when Lapis left, I was like, oh, that's kind of... Alright. Yeah. I feel like we've just... Didn't you just sing a song about this? <laughs> Didn't we just have a you song? Sing a song about not making but, this exact mistake but, that you're about to make? But... After rewatching it a few times, I think it's okay now. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> Are you sure this isn't like Stockholm Syndrome? <laughs> yes. Because 
like, on the face of it, maybe it doesn't seem that different, because, like, Lapis, we thought Lapis was just off in space somewhere, and I think we, it's, I think we have actually updated the status quo somewhat with this episode. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, we kind of updated it a little bit, and then we, like, uh, yeah, debooted it back to where it was. No, no, I think, I think there is, like, despite what it appears, I think there is, like, some progression. Because, like, what we thought was maybe Lapis was just out in some distant part of space. Right. But it, it was revealed that she tried to do that, but then she came back on her own, really. Right. And she's sort of literally and metaphorically trapped in, like, an equilibrium between the two. That's why she's on the moon. She's not all the way back on Earth, but she's not all the way out in space. Yeah. Uh, just a little side note here. In the episode, Lapis said, I was on the edge of the Milky Way, and then I turned back. How fast is Lapis? <laughs> Lapis is moving at, like, light speed here. Do you know how big the Milky Way... She got to the Milky Way in a matter of, like, weeks. She's, like... She must be moving at, like, hyperspace speeds, dude. She's moving at, like, the speed of plaid over here. While also carrying a half the While water. also carrying an enormous chunk of Earth <laughs> and barn. Like, what the... What? Lapis is overpowered. Lapis is Blue Diamond. <laughs> I think blue. Lapis is Blue Diamond. Lapis I think blue. the real Blue Diamond is a fake, and this is the real Blue Diamond. <laughs> okay. okay, speed aside. Yeah, speed... <laughs> We're insane speed, like, uh, continual evidence of Lapis's godhood aside. <laughs> Please, continue. <laughs> so, more, Where was I? <laughs> right, we were talking about, so, Lapis, uh, we we're talking about how you like Lapis leaving, <laughs> apparently. Well, okay, so here's, after the, after the first watching, I thought, well, it feels like we just sort of wasted, like, all this time, like, yeah. the song, like, the whole, her, like, coming to, maybe thinking about talking with Steven about coming back. Seems like we just all threw that all away right now. But I think what's really happening here is, like I said, Lapras is... Lapras. Lapras, <laughs> my favorite gem. <laughs> Lapras is caught in, like, a sort of equilibrium of sorts. Where right, yeah. she does she can't stand to be away, but she's too afraid to be there. So in this, we see Lapras fly away at the end, but I don't think she's really going very far. Because, like, just as quickly as Steven sort of turned her around to the idea of coming back, she really quickly switches back to the idea of flying away and never co- and never coming back. So I feel like she's stuck between these two. And, she, and that's the updated status quo. She's not like... She hasn't decided to be alone forever. She's still... Even after the episode sort of ends with her, like, flying away... She's still very much trapped between the two choices. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I've got something to say. I don't mind too much what actually happened, but the method used to get this to happen is uh, two things. For one, it's uh, irritating. And this is irritating because of, like... So, Steven has a dream about the diamonds, which he has had many times before and had never shown any indication that they mean that the diamonds are close or on their way or any, or even that they're prophetic or any way. They're just, they're mostly just like memories. Like yeah. he, what he's, what, what he's doing is he's like, you know, digging up repressed memories or something. <laughs> but the point is there's no reason to believe that they're in any danger right now. And yet yeah. when Lapis asks him, does this mean the diamonds are coming? He says, I don't know. <laughs> when he okay. could have easily, he could have I... the one thing he could have said one other thing, which is, no, <laughs> this doesn't, or even better, if he wants to be real strong silent type, he could just not mention the dream to Lapis because it might freak her out because it involves the diamonds, which she has been okay. complaining about. Okay, so here's the thing though. I think even if he had said no, Lapis would have just freaked out and left anyway. Because like I said, even if she did like come back to Earth, she, I think even still, she'd like just panic Maybe. and leave and leave again because... She's, like I said, she she can't fully come back and she can't fully leave. No matter, because she's still, like, terrified. <laughs> I don't know. There's no, I don't see any evidence that if Steven hadn't had that dream, she wanted to come back. Or at least for a little while. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if she did come back for a little while, there, what, 
if if all it took was a was Stephen's dream to set her off again, then she probably would have just freaked out about something else. Maybe because like I don't think what I don't think the problem is ah oh, we were so close to getting Lapis back, guys. It was so close. I don't think it was close. I think it was just she was in she was like she was she's flip flopping between she's almost bipolar <laughs> on this issue. <laughs> is that she. She wants to come back, but she feels like she can't because she's afraid she's going to lose everything. <laughs> and that, and that's like the song sort of plays into that with because it has like sort of two parts to the song. There's the first part of the song that's sort of like much more uplifting and happy, and then you get to the second part of the song where like it gets it gets much darker, and like right. the sort of duality of the song represents her inability to sort of accept the happiness that she <laughs> that she wants yeah and that's and that's what that's what i took away from the episode in the end okay concerning lapis at least <laughs> uh, that's at least a you know it's a good explanation i guess it's just like the way it was presented was i think like, yeah like i said the first time i watched it i kind of felt that way too i was like oh yeah all right it just feels kind of cheap yeah but i think i think I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what they were going for with this episode. That's that's a valid interpretation, I'd say. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um. Any you you said you had notes for this episode? Is there anything uh, else you want to yeah, go through? Yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh. So, uh, Steven Universe handholding. Uh, we spoke about this before a little while ago. Yeah. But uh, so let's see. So, just. Steven, there's a problem with the Steven Universe dialogue in which, I mean, you know, it's a problem in the sense that it's annoying. It's just like Steven constantly narrating expository information to himself, where it's just like, you know, yeah, I, gotta, gotta warp this to really the... This really bothers you a lot, I it, think a lot really more than it bothers bother me. me. <laughs> well, it's because I can't help but focus on it, because it's like, that's the only thing in the scene. That's true. That's like, true. it's basically just like... Oh, you should actually tell what you're talking right, about, yeah. specifically. So specifically, I'm talking about... I mean, it happens a couple times in this episode, but specifically, I'm talking about when Steven warps to the moon base, he warps on Lion, and just like last time they warped to the moon base, a long time ago... Uh, Lion is tired and is, you know, breathing heavy and can't get up and whatever. Because, you know, it's a hyper warp or whatever. And Steven then feels the need to get off of Lion and say, Oh man, that must have taken a lot out of you, Lion. What is it? It's like, uh... Yeah. You stay here and rest up. Yeah, yeah. I'll go do this. And it's like, yeah. and So... The reason this annoys me so much <laughs> is a couple of reasons. Is okay. first, we already had this explained to us through the animation, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't need Steven to tell us that this is a hyper warp and that it's a long distance, so it makes him tired and he needs to rest. Because we can see that that's what happened. Like we can just look. We don't need our ears. We can yeah, just we... use our eyes. Two reason number two. This already happened, the same thing happened in that previous episode where they went to the moon base, and they didn't feel the need to, like, like point it out. Well, like, they did, so... I mean, not not in this kind of way. It wasn't like, man, you're really tired, Lion. It was just like, oh, Lion, thanks for taking us. Yeah, the... And, you know, a natural, good way of saying it. <laughs> not, like, some, like, weird, like, I'm my own narrator for my whole life sort of way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, it bothers you a lot more than it bothers me. Yeah, and I see where I see your point, but I'm also like, well, yeah, they could the scene could have been better if Stephen had really just said, "You rest here, lion. I'm gonna go." Yeah, that would have been fine. Or like even not saying anything, just like yeah, exactly. A pat and like going off. I'm a big advocate of uh, less dialogue is better dialogue. Yeah. Concise dialogue is better dialogue. I should say. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the absolute definition of non-concise dialogue, as it could have been cut completely and nothing would have been lost. Yeah, I, I can see that, but at the same, I, it doesn't really bother me that much. I can see why. Um, you said there's another there's other examples? Yeah, that yeah. Do you so, want to bring up? <laughs> not of that specifically, like, over-explaining, okay. but more like there's, like, a problem, in quotes, by the way, for the audience, a problem of Steven being on his own and how... Stephen will just like babble to himself, and I kind of find that annoying. Like, it's not 
something like okay here's some example so it's like uh he'll just he's just walking around the moon before he finds lapis Mm -hmm. he's walking around it's like man this is weird and it's like, man, thanks, Steve, thanks for telling us how to feel, Stephen. I mean, yeah, I guess, the music like, and set didn't really, uh, didn't really sell it for me. I mean, you know, it's a kid show; they gotta like slap the kids over the head with it. Like, but for me, <laughs> it's a little bit annoying. Yeah, you know, when he was like, <laughs> I wrote around. down like, who are you talking to? <laughs> yeah, when he was like rolling around like the moon, like getting to like going to the barn. They probably could have had a lot less dialogue like, there. Man, like, I wonder where Lapis. You could. I just... wonder where Lap. I'm looking for Lapis right now, guys. Uh, please <laughs> point to the screen. Where is Lapis? <laughs> Do you see Lapis? <laughs> and it's like Lapis is like hiding behind like a meat morph or something. <laughs> it's like it's like a giant cursor gets onto the screen and like clicks on it. <laughs> Um, Man, why can't, why can't Steven Universe be like my other favorite shows? <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, okay, so... Anyway. It, uh, f- for the record, this is a minor complaint. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, like, up in arms and like, oh, I'm this, gonna quit yeah. this show. Yeah, this didn't ruin the episode. This didn't ruin the episode, but it was not a good first impression, <laughs> and I think might have influenced my later uh, not really liking of the song, because I was already in kind of like a <laughs> sketched mood. <laughs> I was already like on the fence. I was like, yeah, I don't know where this is going. And then the song came. I was like, Meh. And I also wrote down, maybe I'm tired of something. Laugh and said, maybe I'm tired of running away. Lol. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Obviously not. Apparently not. No. And then later she's like, man, you should be used to this. <laughs> should, I mean, honestly, it's like you probably should have just saw this coming. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. All right. I all think right. that about wraps it up. But importantly. In this episode, Pearl, it, it is revealed to Stephen that Pearl killed Pink, killed Diamond. Pink Diamond. At least that's his, that's what it looks like. All right. <laughs> so, a single white rose. A single pale. Oh, rose. pale rose. Oh. Have, Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. Sorry. It's, it means the same thing. So I want to start this episode off by saying that uh, great use of flashback here. Great use of reused footage right here. Uh, very much better than any oh, other yeah, show that at the very beginning. It. At the very, very yeah, beginning, okay. it's like, it needs to explain to the audience. Because, I mean, like, I was just complaining about trying to catch the audience up in the last episode, yeah. but this is the good way to do it, which is <laughs> concise. Like, I just yeah, said, it concise. So it's just like, it's not like playing whole scenes out, like, the whole scene of them walking up the stairs with eyeball and eyeball, like, going like, oh, pink diamond. It's just like the, it's just like the gotcha moment. It's just like the pink diamond. It should yeah. kill a pink diamond. And then it flashes to another, flashes to another one really quick, cuts it up real quick. So it's not yeah. like it almost doesn't feel like it's reused, even though it all is, you know, just yeah, yeah. animation that they've done before. But you know, I'm just mentioning this because there are a lot of flashbacks and a lot of shows that are just garbage and they like kill the <laughs> pace. And this actually like enhanced the pace yeah. of the episode because you can like it like flashes to Stephen like getting more and more anxious exactly. as it goes on. Yeah, and then Pearl walks in with amethyst. And here, and there's another thing that I like about this episode. It's funny without getting in the way of the series. Yeah, I thought this episode was <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah, like, and like, the funny has like a cutoff point. And past this point, like around halfway, the episode becomes all serious. Yeah, the episode's not funny after the first. <laughs> yeah, well, like, oh. like I and like, it is funny. It has, this episode has one of my favorite Pearl of all time Pearl lines. And that line is. Let's just stay here where everything is alphabetized. Yeah, I wrote that one down. <laughs> that one's really good. Everything's alphabetized. But yeah, so it starts out, Steven is, needs to ask Pearl if she killed Pink yeah, Diamond. I mean, obviously. Everyone's all like, oh, Steven asked a direct question. Yeah, I know. Hey. <laughs> it's like, man, Steven finally overcame his crippling fear of getting answers and <laughs> having things explained to him. He's too busy explaining things to the audience. He doesn't want anything explained to him. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just joking, guys. <laughs> keep, keep, keep your heads, keep your heads on. All right, I'm just keep your gems on. All right, guys. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. So uh, finally, Stephen does ask Pearl. He's like, "So did you?" Yes. And he's like, "And of course, she can't talk about it." The, it makes me kind of wonder: Is this like a? Is this just like a? Like sort of like a mental tick with like the putting your hands over her mouth thing, or is there like an actual like 
diamond order in her brain. Like, she has to put her mouth over, her hand well, over her mouth. I mean, I'm just, I, yeah. This theory is that it's because she's a pearl, that yeah. she might be a sort of programmed in yeah, certain Yeah, that's ways. what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's, that's a working theory at the moment. Uh, okay. I haven't really because, like, it does much. seem like she is actually, like, physically incapable of telling Stephen. Yeah. Because otherwise she probably would tell just tell him. Like she said she wanted to. <laughs> probably. I mean, they, you know, it wouldn't be the first time they've kept something from Stephen. Well, yeah, I mean, like, but at this point, he's they, 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 he's asking a direct question. Yeah. <laughs> they can't right, just yeah. say, um... <laughs> he's finally found their weakness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen, you finally found the chink in their armor. <laughs> Direct right, question. Right. So, so we get some hilarious phone humor, <laughs> which I actually thought was pretty funny because it was pro and amethyst. Yeah, yeah. And but I, I, w- I was anticipating it being like, oh boy, phone humor, here we go. But it was actually okay. <laughs> yeah. But basically, the, the gist is eventually Stephen texts Pearl saying he wants to tell him, but Pearl says you haven't touched your phone since you put it away. So. Right. Well, sti- well, uh,. <laughs> She texts, she texts him back saying, I can't tell you no matter what or whatever. Yeah, something like and then that. he goes to Pearl and she's like, I didn't text you that. Yeah, exactly. So they decide, and Pearl can't find her phone, so she decides that it's, it's obvious like from the way she's saying it that she can't say I'm sending you in to find this information that you want to know. Yeah. But that's the real reason I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah. But the reason I'm saying is for you to find my phone. <laughs> I can't, there are some things I can't tell you, but I can tell you I need my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... No, that's pretty clever. I like the subtlety of that. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty convenient, this whole uh, going into your mind flashback. I mean, or flashback. Uh, going into your mind plot device here. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that it's in, like, you know... I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna note that we've never seen anything even remotely hinted at to this effect. Well, other than Pearl putting things away in her gym. Right, putting things away in her gym. Putting putting various things. This is is like an important expansion of what exactly Pearl does with her gem. Yeah. Like, now we know that there is actually like a little person inside of her (laughs) who alphabetizes everything. (laughs) And that she has like a million different things. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure, like, there's a... Sh- people, like, look at all the little different things she has. So there's, like, a shotgun in there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. She's prepared. She is prepared. And, she is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm looking into the alternate reality where uh, Surface Pearl just files away Steven and then leaves him there forever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty horrifying. Yeah. It would have been but, cool. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. So... Stephen enters Pearl's Pearl and meets Pearl inside Pearl's Pearl. Inside. Who tell who looks who can't find the phone. So she go so he goes inside Pearl inside Pearl's Pearl and meets past versions of Pearl. Well yeah, she, he's basically going through her memories. Basically, yeah. All and, the traumatic ones. <laughs> like and I like how there's like different the different layers of Pearl all have, like, a different outfit and are in a different, like, stage yeah, of that's Pearl's good. life, basically. And, like, yeah, so she talks to, like, Pearl, who's sad about Rose, like, in the more yeah. recent past. Uh, <laughs> Pearl with PTSD. Yeah. From getting yeah, hit see, by that, the that, That's the point that I was talking about earlier. Like, after she goes into the war memories, like, he says, he says something along the lines of, Pearl, I mean... Pearl inside, Pearl inside, Pearl inside, Pearl's Pearl. Is this really about your phone? And that's like the cutoff. Like when that Pearl starts talking, yeah. that is the cutoff point for the funny of the episode. Yeah. Previous to that, when it's like when it's Pearl sad about Rose, uh, that's really funny actually. Yeah. That's a really funny. It's time. funny and it's, it's a sad kind Where of funny, but it is pretty funny. Yeah, because like when uh, when Pearl, when Pearl was crying about it, she's like. Oh, I'm gonna lose Rose. And at first, I was like, "Oh boy, man, more of this, more of this easy dialogue here." Oh, she's sad about this, and she's like, "I'm gonna lose her, just like I lost my what was it, my phone." <laughs> and, I, and at that point, I was just bursting out laughing. That's that hilarious. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but once they get to war memories, the funny stops, and Pearl, yeah. like Pearl's little dialogue there, is pretty. It's so quiet and very and kind of intense. It's like we thought we won, 
they were all leaving. But then there was this bright light and everyone. <laughs> that's really kind of haunting. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so Pearl go so not Pearl. Uh, Steven goes even deeper. <laughs> Inception. In goes yeah. even deeper. I mean, this is just Inception the episode. Yeah. Basically. Into into Pearl and sees Pearl disguised as Rose killing quote unquote Pink Diamond. And then goes even deeper. <laughs> and then goes even deeper to like fifteen minutes before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was kind of funny. That, I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty funny. He, like, moves, like, 15 feet and goes, like, 15 minutes into the pass. <laughs> yeah. Like, he goes and from outside the palanquin to inside the palanquin. Yeah. And then we get Rose talking to Pearl, and it sounds like Rose is sort of, like, talking Pearl into murdering Pink Diamond. Yeah, that's the, that's the misdirect here. She's like, okay, you gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. And which is really messed up. If it's like, whoa, yeah. I was like, whoa, it's like, whoa. But I was, I was thinking that seems a little out of character, even for Rose. Yeah. I don't think she'd really do that. And then it's revealed. Done. I can't exactly shatter myself. Done. 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 Rose, I hope, there's a, I hope there's a spoiler warning around here. I mean, eh, it's whatever. we're talking about the new episodes. Yeah, we're talking about the new episodes. Why would you watch this before watching the episode? <laughs> if you if you got spoiled by this, you're a chump, and we don't care. <laughs> Rose Quartz is Pink, Pink Diamond. Diamond. All your wildest crack theories <laughs> come spiraling, shimmering, and kicking the life, <laughs> like an like a corpse electrified. <laughs> your dead theory has been. Revived in magnificent fashion into the real canon. <laughs> yes. And Amazing. It was really diabolically done. Oh, this it was just, twist because like, like they gave at a point we thought we knew everything. We yeah. thought we, oh, we yeah. thought we understood. Like eyeball said, like rose quartz shattered pink diamond. We yeah, thought we had all the answers, but then slowly. Things more and more aspects get thrown into doubt over time yeah. by Blue Zircon and a few other things, like sort of like making it seem. Wait a minute, how did this happen exactly? Yeah, it's like wait, we don't know everything. What yeah, are the we details don't, here? What happened exactly? And now finally, a reveal that clears up the discrepancies in all the stories that like answers all the questions basically, basically about yeah. the what exactly happened i mean we're gonna have to wait until the next episode to see like exactly exactly what happened <laughs> well maybe but for the we get the gist of it yeah it's like you know so that's i thought that's really clever how they sort of like sort of like i said they they gave us the answers but they were wrong but they were wrong we thought we knew but we didn't well we knew nothing yeah, we knew you know nothing, nothing Jon Snow. Yeah, you know nothing. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, you, you could accuse it of being dishonest, I guess. Like not the not the characters, the show. You could accuse I mean, it because Eyeball did directly like remember on the moon base, Eyeball the ruby was like literally like I saw pink time, I saw rose quartz well, shatter. Well, I mean, she was lying. Like, she did yeah, see she rose wasn't, quartz, and she <laughs> wasn't lying. And that's I was just to say I don't really agree with that because you know there is an explanation for it. But it is a little galling, I guess. To, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't judge somebody if they were like, well, they just said something and then did something different. Yeah. But I mean, that's the fun part. But like I said, there was, they had, we thought we had the answers, but then they sort of throwing yeah. doubt on it. And it was, I thought that was, yeah. And there, obviously there are far reaching implications of this revelation oh, yes. throughout the series. Like this I mean, uh, not the least of which is that Steven is Pink Diamond now. <laughs> yeah, Steven is Pink Diamond now. That's pretty interesting. That's, yeah. that's gonna... That, and it does, like, answer some weird questions about Rose's strange abilities, like, yeah. to heal people and to create armies of plants. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that hasn't come up in a while, yeah. but, uh, yeah, and or the fact that, uh, her shields are, like, really good, yeah, like... able to... Defend against an attack from the other diamond because mm -hmm. she is also a diamond. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not just some rose quartz shield. <laughs> it's a pink diamond shield. <laughs> which, uh, which I guess it's maybe is a plot hole. Like, yes, how did nobody notice that rose quartz was like really special at the time? Uh, that's a, I mean, we that's don't know a... the details, so maybe they have ways of not letting the other people know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> it, it, it's not out of the question that 
the diamonds could notice. Man, that rose quartz is really uh unique. Really compared unique. Compared to every yeah. other rose quartz. Mm. <laughs> Man, the rose quartz doesn't act anything like any other rose quartzes. Mm. Mm. Wonder if it's. Uh, but uh, apparently. Apparently, this guy's work. Apparently, so. <laughs> uh, changing into a different gem as a gem is enough to fool other gems, at least from a distance, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is one of those things that makes me kind of want to rewatch the entire show just for like yeah. a recontextualization of everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and here's another really cool thing. Thinking about like sort of the morality of Rose Quartz and now Pink yeah. Diamond, like, well. Over the course of the show, there's been a very thorough deconstruction of Rose Quartz as oh, yes. this perfect figure. One like, could say that is like the arc of the whole show. Is, yeah. uh, for going from idolizing Pink Diamond as or Pink Diamond, Rose Quartz as uh, a god, <laughs> like basically like a, a a divine mother figure who is perfect and has no flaws, yeah. to finding out that she is a more flawed. Yeah. Yeah. Like more flawed and flawed. much more interesting character. Yeah, flawed and interesting character. Flawed, haha, <laughs> gem. <laughs> yeah, and this is like another just an, like so we do know now that I guess it, at the very least she never murdered anyone. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Except in the indirect way of she starting kinda, a, like yeah, causing she... a war that ended the lives of thousands. Uh, it's true. Yeah, but like like I said, this but like. It is, like, even when we thought she killed Pink Diamond... Yeah. It was all... There's always... And even now, there's always this current of... It was for the greater good. Yeah, of course. And like she kind of had... had noble goals. And, like... Like, even now, even at her pretending to... Her, like, faking her death, she's doing it for the sake of Earth. Yeah. And Earth only survived because of what she did. But, like... And this is what I find interesting, is we can, like, sort of draw parallels to this, and recent events with Stephen, where he sacrificed himself to go, uh, to go back to the diamonds for, to, be, to be put on trial. Right. It's like, he has noble intentions, and what he's doing, he's doing for the greater good, but, it end, but like, the results, like, sort of hurt the people around him, despite that, like... Nope. I think they're. I think they're going for a bit of a. I don't know. I was already. I was mostly on the side of Stephen made the right choice. Yeah, there. Well, like I said. Well, didn't Rose well, yeah. Pink Diamond make the right choice, Maybe. like in deciding to save the Earth? It's true. She did it for the sake of the Earth. Yeah, I um I wanted to mention uh, back in the uh, first episode stuff the Diamond said that I found interesting that revealed I think a lot of lore, especially you know in the mm-hmm. context of yeah, that. Uh, one thing they said is like it's like. Begged for she, you begged for the colonies. Something. This isn't an exact quote, by the way. She was like, "You begged for these colonies, and like, uh, and now all you want to do is give them back." So what I what happened that what we can see happen there is, Pink Diamond. Her first, uh, her first thing that she wanted to do was she just wanted to abandon Earth and like let, yeah, let the humans there just do their thing and like get gems off yeah. that planet. That's what she wanted to do in the first place. But when that didn't work, she resorted to the whole Rose Quartz Gambit. Mm-hmm. Which I think is important, because it means that, like, violence was not the first option. Here. <laughs> yeah. Like, she did try to do this in a way that would be better, yeah. but it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Due to the other diamonds. Yeah. And, and it was, and it, and it's interesting, because you see this, this, this is explained through Blue Diamond's dialogue, mm. which is, on, on a, like, a misunderstanding of what Pink Diamond really wants. Exactly. <laughs> She's saying, see, Pink, Ro, Blue Diamond thinks Pink Diamond's complaining about how hard it is, and she doesn't want to do it anymore. But really, Pink Diamond is trying to, like, save the Earth. Yeah, she's like, trying to, like, be ethical right yeah, now. Yeah, she's trying not to destroy the Earth. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Diamonds know nothing of ethics. <laughs> and uh, they're just some sort of, like, wandering parasite species. <laughs> and, like, a, and yeah. And this brings some new context to the depression of Pink Diamond. Mm. As she feels very responsible for what she thinks happened to Pink Diamond. And that's very sad. Uh, you said Pink I, Diamond twice there. I did? Yeah depression of blue diamond yeah. then and how she feels very responsible for what she thinks happened to pink diamond mm-hmm. i'll edit that in better yeah <laughs> i mean and uh the funny thing is is that it is pink it is uh, i just did too it is blue diamond's fault even if it's not for the reasons that she thought <laughs> yeah it is a little bit so yeah. good job feeling guilty about it yeah yeah that's 
I think it's more interesting that Yellow Diamond doesn't feel bad at all. She's like, we uh, after the after the well, trial. No, she does. She is sad about it. Well, <laughs> yeah, but she's not that sad about it. I mean, she's not in what do you what do you call it? She's not like broken yeah. up about it like Blue Diamond is and still is thousands of years later. She's sure. gotten over it. But like, it's safe to say that she, she Yellow Diamond is very upset and very indignant that. Like, say, Blue Zircon would insinuate that she would do something like that. Yeah. Which is interesting. I think it's like... <laughs> at the trial, I think the the main theory was, like, Yellow Diamond had something to do with, yeah, yeah. Well, with that. And that it turns out a, that she didn't. Like, yeah, not at all. Yeah, that's... I think that's... Which is interesting. Because, like, it, it's funny the way we have... Because, like, you could easily read it as Yellow Diamond is trying to hide her guilt. Right. Oh, but... You could easily also read it as Yellow Diamond is like indignant or like like just angered that he would even suggest such a thing right, yeah. that she might be involved with the death of Pink Diamond, which she is, I still think, to be quite upset about. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So it's sort of recontextual. Like like I said, that's one of the sort of red herrings that they throw that they threw out here to draw us away from the truth of. Rose Quartz being Pink Diamond. Yeah, it's very rough. <laughs> that seems to check out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else is there? Yeah, do you have any other notes before I get into before my dumb rant? Before you get into your thing. Before I get into my dumb rant about All right, other um, people. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I've just got a cu- two more things. Uh, for one, uh, well, I guess it's three technically, but like uh, Goblin Amy. Uh, what, what? Goblin Amy is uh, when, at the very beginning of the episode, when... Amethyst is sitting down next to uh, Pearl, teaching her how to use the phone. She's in, like, goblin mode. <laughs> like, I just noticed that she looks like a little goblin. Okay. And I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway. Uh, sick phone case. Uh, <laughs> brings out a phone case, got a cool, like, palm tree on it. Uh, pretty cool. All right. <laughs> and then, uh, the most important one, uh, how long have you been standing there? Uh, it's just, like, Ameth- at the end when Stephen comes out and he's saying, like, Mom was Pink Diamond. And, like, Amethyst and uh, Garnet are just standing oh, yeah, that, there. Oh, I almost forgot to bring that up. <laughs> I just, like, I know they were probably, like, saw Pearl there, and, and Pearl probably told them what happened, and then they were waiting for Steven to come out. But I just think it's funny. That it's just, it, I fa- it struck me as funny the way it, like, panned over to them. Like, yeah, that, they've been here the whole time. That, that was a moment I did want to bring up. Like, earlier I said how it the sh- the, that episode was funny without getting in the way of the serious. I think that is the case until that very last scene. Yeah. I think that would have been, the last line should have been, Mom was Pink Diamond, as opposed to Amethyst sort of funny reaction. Uh, I can <laughs> I, see that. I think they I didn't might, think they were I think they could have cut it before the, or maybe just have them, like, show that they're there and that they heard, but we don't need Amethyst going, whoa. Yeah, okay, that was, that was pretty bad. I think that was a bit, oh. I think, I think it would have been better if they just yeah. cut it right before that. What if, yeah, I think if they just, like, panned over, and then uh, Amethyst also was like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, like how, like how Garnet Or maybe looks. even just a less yeah, like, humorous what, what <laughs> you know? Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I see what you mean. But I think that sort of, like, upset the mood a little bit at yeah, the very end of... there. But like I said, it was it's a minor thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. And speaking of minor problems, there was some, there is, has been some backlash to the reveal of Rose Quartz as Pink Diamond. Let's get right into the news. What the heck was that? It's, it's drama. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... There are some people with some really wrong opinions yeah. on the internet. <laughs> and, we have, and we cannot let such things stand. <laughs> we cannot stand. let this stand. <laughs> I'm calling them out. That's it. I'm calling them out by name. I'm going to hold on one second, audience. <laughs> I can't let this slide. I can let some things slide, but this is just too far. <laughs> I watched two YouTube videos of people talking about the reveal, and they're just being wrong. And let's, let's see, we got um, VG Marcus, oh, if that is your real if name. If that is your real name. <laughs> Who just, I don't know, he, he just made some dumb points about, oh, it, I'm not even going to go into it. It's, he just, 
And then slice of otaku. Slice of if otaku. That is, if that is your, I'm calling both of you out for having bad Steven Universe opinions. I'm not calling you out for having bad Steven Universe names. <laughs> Sorry, even Steven. I know. <laughs> yeah, they both made videos. Imagine, about... imagine if there was a Steven Universe character named Slice of Otaku. It would be everyone's least favorite, and his name is Ronaldo. <laughs> you would be Ronaldo if you were in Steven Universe, dude. Think about that. <laughs> the Think both, about it. But they the both made videos in the same exact way. Yeah. <laughs> About, oh, the problem with rose quartz being pink diamonds. Like, man, you don't know anything about this show. Pink diamonds, like, you don't know me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I think, I, I think I'll just leave it at that, basically. Yeah. I'm going to call you out and <laughs> not explain exactly why you're wrong. And I could go into great detail, oh, but yeah. Maybe that'd I, be think that might bore, yeah. I think that might bore everyone to death yeah. if I just, just talked about how these two people were totally wrong. Plus, I mean, it's just their opinions and whatever. I mean, it's, guess not wrong. that that makes them any less wrong. <laughs> it just makes it harder to argue against. Because then you say, well, I thought this. And it's like, well, you were wrong. <laughs> and they are wrong. Mm -hmm. Cause, I, mean, I haven't watched the videos in question. Uh, because... The reasoning you know, is weak. Because, you best. know, yeah, the Steven Universe fandom is, of course, uh, cancer. And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have exposed myself to that <laughs> willingly. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> what else is there to talk about? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, plays out, because, like, this isn't the first time that Rose has lied to them for their own good. Yeah, like I said, she she does things that sort of hurt, that she does them for ostensibly, ost the greater good. Yeah. <laughs> like, the protection of Earth, and, like, and all these sorts of things. But they do sort of have these consequences, like hiding bismuth away for thousands of years and not, never telling anyone what happened to her. That's pretty messed up. But she did it, it's like, sort of because she couldn't really find a better way to, like, deal with the problem. <laughs> well, I mean... Because she's not perfect. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I feel like they're all... Sometimes with the show, I feel like they're unfair to Rose Quartz. Like, they're... <laughs> Like, they're okay. just sort of, like, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I feel like they intentionally, like, uh, intentionally, not misinterpret, but sort of, like, unfa unfavorably or, like, uh, uncharitably is the word I'm looking for. Uncharitably interpret her actions in a way that's, like, like, especially, like, with the Bismuth thing, it's like, he's like, oh, she sealed me away like I was nothing. It's like, I mean... And then everyone's like, yeah, you, you know, you're right, you know, you're kind of right, maybe well, she is it wasn't... And it's like, it, it's like, what, what was she, was, she was either that or kill you, like, well, okay. so and she didn't want to kill I you. I think with that particular instance, it was the fact, like, the, she sealed her away and then told everybody she was dead. Yeah. And that was kind of a little, like, because, Even... do you remember seeing Pearl's and Garnet's reactions to seeing her again? Yeah. They loved Bismuth. And that's a really messed up thing to do. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is my, you know, my, like, my evil, like, Machiavellian sort of, like, in, not my Machiavellian nature, but my Machiavellian sympathies, perhaps. Because, you know, obviously I'm not Machiavellian. But I have a lot of sympathy for people who are. <laughs> okay. In that, I think, in that personally, I think, like, you can, if you're a leader... I think you should get a lot of leeway when it comes to lying to your subordinates for their greater for the great for the greater good. As long as it as long as you can see that it I mean, you know. Obviously this is a fine line to walk in such and such and such. Well, but that's, that's what given, makes Rose Quartz yeah, interesting. That's what makes her interesting. And I think Rose Quartz has a really good track record of keeping the things that needs to be kept, even if they don't like it. Like I, w I would agree with a lot of her decisions to not tell everyone about it. Like like the Bismuth thing is unfortunate, but it is not Rose Quartz's fault. Bismuth in is the traitor. Well, sort of, yeah. No, not sort of. Bismuth is the traitor. Yeah, okay, Bismuth is the traitor. Bismuth wanted to shatter gems and Rose Quartz did not want to shatter gems. And as we now know, she never did. Yeah, she, she never <laughs> even shattered one gem, apparently, yeah. as far which, as we know. Which is like which like, you know, she stands up for what she believes in. Exactly. She doesn't like contradict herself at least. Yeah. 
Jesus. And, but... and, and, and who knew? Rose Quartz killing Pink Diamond was a, like, a complete fallacy from the beginning, and we never even knew. Yeah. She and never could have. It was, she just started a war that killed thousands, but like I said, but for, if she for the had, sake of Earth. For the sake, if she hadn't started that war, Earth would have been destroyed. Yeah. So, you know. So at the end of the day, what she, like, I, that's what I'm saying, like, what she, what she does, she does for the good of everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, if, if you think that Rose Quartz's war wasn't justified, uh, due to the circumstances, then you just don't believe in any war at all. Well, yeah. Because, like, they, there, was, there wasn't any way that this was going to get solved without violence. Exactly. <laughs> like, sorry, not all problem. Not all, you can't talk no jutsu your way through every single problem. This yeah. isn't, this but isn't Naruto. At the, same, at, the sa- <laughs> at the same time, it is understandable when Rose Quartz's friends are upset. Yeah, Over fair. these things. So, like, that's why I'm sort of putting, that's why I'm sort of think there's a good parallel between Rose Quartz and Steven at this point. Well, at least recent, what Steven's recent actions with the whole. Yeah. Right, right, right. That arc. Abduction. <laughs> Where, like, like she, he kind of left Connie behind. Like, Connie would rather fight to the death than see something terrible happen to Steven. Yeah. And, and that... we can go into, well, I, I, some other time maybe we'll go into how stupid Connie is. <laughs> no, Like, come on. Up. Connie's great. Like, come on. Like, at that one, it's like, Connie, come on. You're not going to fight. What? Like I said, it's like, maybe what he did, he did for the good of everyone. And in right. the end, it turned out okay, but it's not, yeah. it's, I think it's fair for the characters to be yeah. kind of upset with him. <laughs> It's just like they're they're upset with him is a little bit toothless to me because it's like well it was the right decision like if he had made the well, yeah, that's dis- that's why that's why it doesn't turn out like Rose Quartz yeah. and like secrets being kept for thousands of years yeah. and it's just sort of a thing that is yeah. dealt with quickly but I think there is a parallel on the I mean I guess that's the trouble with being a Machiavellian uh, gem <laughs> leader as opposed to a regular leader when you're a regular leader you just die and all your secrets die with you. <laughs> About when you're a gem, you live for thousands of years, and these things have time to fester. <laughs> so now it's so now it's not like oh she kept she lied to me. It's like she lied to me for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think last time when we were talking about Steven Universe, we talked a lot about how. The show's kind of lost a lot of momentum. We're not sure where it's yep, going. Yep, <laughs> it's probably. But it's they really gotten, had uh, an answer for us. Yeah, it's really gotten... Now I really want to see where the show's going. I mean, and <laughs> I... I mean... And this is out of nowhere. Like, what just happened? Yeah. It's like, this all started with Ronaldo, uh, like, giving him, like, a telescope to look at the moon. <laughs> like, what? It, the, this, the, the story really got tased into gear right now. Like, I know, it did. Like... It's like been it's been swimming around the kiddie pool and now it's been like thrown down Niagara Falls. <laughs> I like that metaphor. Thanks. <laughs> it's been in the wave pool. <laughs> All right, but uh, I mean, I like it. It's pretty good. I know say, it is really good. I'd say overall, uh, I approve of the whole uh, pink diamond thing, yeah. even if it took a little getting used to uh, after like uh, just like reading some. Uh, ever, I mean, you know. I don't keep up with the Steven Universe fandom anymore, but <laughs> even back when I did, they were talking about how Pink Diamond was probably Rose Quartz. And everybody, and nobody believed, don't even try to say that you believe, you gotta show me your post, or you, your Tumblr post, where you said, where you like, you drew, where you drew some fan art of Pink Diamond as Rose Quartz. Or else I'm not gonna believe you, because there's no proof that will be sufficient. <laughs> You need to have, like, dates and, like, carbon dating to make sure it's, like, before this announcement, before this episode came out. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, it, it was unanimous, unanimously declared to be a crack theory. <laughs> it's the biggest crack theory to come true since uh, Cora was gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> this, is a, this is a great moment in crack theories. Like, so, does that mean... <laughs> Onion might actually be fight time. <laughs> Guys, I mean, we have to consider. <laughs> we have to consider everything now. What if, what if he like, what if he like pulls down his shirt and there's like a little shard of like white diamond, right there, and like white diamond like broke a little piece of herself off to be like a spy, <laughs> and like and, techni- and like technically onion is white diamond. Oh boy. 
Please don't. Yeah, no, please don't do that. that <laughs> please don't actually do that. And we all, we all know that Onion is actually like Satan reborn. Yeah, that's a different problem. That's a whole different problem. That's a whole like different if the diamonds problem. if the diamonds met Onion, they'd have another war. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of just the diamonds versus Onion. <laughs> well, right then. Thank you very much for listening. We appreciate it. We appreciate you took the time to uh, gem shapeshift some ears to listen to us. Okay, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, um, you know, we're, we've what? obviously got a very Onion high is... percentage of gem listeners. So uh, Onion, is white... thank you. Onion is white diamond confirmed. Um, yep. uh, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Peridot is uh, green diamond. <laughs> <laughs>